For those of you that are intercessors, and I love you so much, for those of you that fast and pray and go into a season of desperate crying out to God, and you can't shake the feeling, I've got to have this, I've got to have it, I've got to have it. All of that is a sign that God's going to answer your prayer. Blessed are those who hunger, for they shall be filled. I'm going to say it again, see if I can get a response. Blessed are those who hunger, for they shall be filled. Her name is Teresa Stacy. She currently lives in Clear Lake, California. I had been doing a series of meetings when the Holy Spirit said, go to Clear Lake, California. Pastor of a small Assembly of God church invited me. I had been in an arena and we had several thousand, but now I was in a church that could barely seat 200 people. But I never felt better in my life. My wife and I felt better because we only go where God tells us to go. It doesn't matter about the size, the amount of the money, none of that matters to us because we know that if wherever we go, Heaven will stand behind us. See, the reason that this meeting, the reason this meeting is so powerful is because it is authorized by heaven. See, God is endorsing this night. The devil is officially going to be defeated because it's been handed down from the throne of God that on the 16th of April in the year 2023 in Radiant Church, the devastating blow to de demons that have been here for centuries is being dealt right now. Come on, somebody. Right now. Glory to God. Right now. Your healing is important to God. Look at me right now. Do you know there's a man up there with heart disease and he doesn't know why I know he has it? He's wondering, I better, please don't pick me out of the crowd. Don't say that. Don't tell God that you refuse to fall down under the power because you're just putting a target on your chest. Young lady over here with massive headaches, not just migraine, but the kind that makes you want to lose your life. God's preparing you for your healing. The power of God is preparing you for your healing. I'm aware of various illnesses all around me. This is not the kind of thing you say. The Bible says you'll stand before God for every idle word. And there has been a whole boatload of men and women on social media saying the Lord says when he didn't say it. So that moment for Teresa Stacy came when her doctor having tried everything, ladies and gentlemen, told her, go home and die. Go home, set your house in order, you're going to die. She had one of the most advanced cases of nerve disease that I've ever heard of. Even bed sheets caused her pain. She couldn't put a sheet over her skin. From the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, she had this peripheral neuropathy and pain that inflamed itself. She had advanced diabetes. Her liver was 90% dead. Doctor said, your heart's failing. Because of a car accident, a portion of her spine began to soften and she had lost two inches of height. Liver disease, the pain in her nerves, heart disease, diabetes, she's finished. So she hears that there's a healing service and comes to the meeting 
half hour early and is turned away. Fire marshal said there's too many people. She waits until the next night, comes an hour early, and every time she's coming, it's agony. Now there's a light rain, and the lineup of people starts at 4.30 for a 7 o'clock service. Of course, we always begin early when it's like that. I had to call the pastor on the phone. I said, it's 5 o'clock, and there are enough people to fill your church outside, standing in the rain. And we need to go and open the door and have church right now. We're not waiting till 7 o'clock. Well, the second time she came, she was turned away. Because the seats filled up so soon. And that was when she had come 90 minutes early. Third time, she's days away from going to heaven. Pain in her body is indescribable. And she tells her husband, we're going over there right now, several hours early. She ended up in the meeting in what would have been the equivalent of a seat right there on the aisle. Just barely to the right of me. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me. The floor of that church was cement with in an indoor-outdoor carpeting. It was a quarter inch thick. That's all it was. She's sitting there. And the Holy Spirit said, if you'll get out of the pulpit and walk down to that woman, I will be glorified. Now, now I want you to watch me, and I want all of you to listen to me. My passion is to give God the glory. The uh, utter life of the, this man is to give God all the glory. When there's a miracle, I don't feel a transcendent sense of accomplishment. I feel the fear of God. I don't understand an arrogant minister. That is such a foreign concept to me. I don't understand the possibility that a true move of God is in a room and you're not afraid of being in the flesh, afraid of acting up or saying something you shouldn't. Multiply that with the fact that there may be someone in the room dying who's made your meeting their last attempt. That instead of going to emergency, they've come to you. How long have they waited outside? What have they been through? So there as she was on the, the seventh row back, the seventh seat back on the aisle. And I walked down there and I had no words of insight at all. I knew nothing except to pray for her. I walked down there. I said, stand up. And when I, I'm going to tell you, my heart dropped when I watched what she went through to try to stand up. I thought that was the most cruel request I could have made. She struggled to her feet and did everything in her power and stood there. And then I began to describe because in the moment God gave me a word. I said, your spine is being healed. Your liver is being healed. Your pancreas is being healed. Your nerves are being healed. And I'll tell you what, she fell on the floor with peripheral neuropathy across her body fell on a cement floor nobody caught her I'm telling you you'd start terror meanwhile her husband is sobbing violently sobbing and God is operating on her she said to me when I hit that floor it felt like I fell into a feather bed she said, I laid there and it sounded like your voice was at the end of a tunnel. And I began to feel the heat of God moving vertebrae. I saw felt power go through my liver. I felt the anointing of the spirit on all my vital organs in my body. And suddenly Teresa, when she hit the ground, her height was five foot seven. When she stood up on her feet, she was five foot nine. Somebody give God the glory. Give God the glory. Then, she goes back to her doctor. He runs all the battery of tests. 
blood skin. That night she slept in the same bed with her husband for the first time in 12 years. She woke up refreshed, no pain in her body. She stepped, bent, did everything she couldn't do before. So they ran all the blood tests, everything else, and they told her, we're going to send all these results to the UC Medical Center in San Francisco. And so they got her before and after report. And you know what they came back and said? They said, all your machines are broken. <laughs> because this liver is so pure that it only exists in a human one time, and that's when they're in the womb. Give him praise. Give him the 